Hey and welcome to Mars Mate. Today I'm showing how to fold hexagon and diamond patterns and some ideas of what you can make using this technique. So I'm starting with a simple paper version and rolling it up. The design is clearer on thinner paper and with thicker paper you need to use your nails to make the pattern show. I am pinching the paper to create the hexagon shape, rotating 90 degrees to press the next pattern. For the diamond, I'm leaving no gap as you can see with the hexagon here, and instead pinching the in-between section with my nails or tips of my fingers to create a point. After pressing patterns all the way down, I'm opening it up slowly so the pattern doesn't ruin. Next, I'm pulling on the ends to make the pattern more 3D. The pattern is clearer the closer you are to the side of paper that is inside when rolling, and as you move away from this end, the hexagons become slightly wider. So to roll up the paper into a tube, I'm starting from the side that was on the outside when rolling before, so that the clearest section is more visible. Another method is rolling paper into a cone, so you end up with the pattern going out from a point, which you can use flat or roll into a cone again. I made a few more patterns and you can see some wider hexagons which were made by rolling the paper into a wider tube. Next I'm repeating the method but on plastic and an example of what you can make is a lantern. The bottom sentence is just a guide and if you want to roll narrower hexagons for this length your plastic needs to be thinner. I've actually peeled off washed and dried the plastic that's sometimes in the window of food or cosmetic packaging. This was to reuse plastic and save money, but you can also buy plastic sheets. I've trimmed away where the plastic was glued to the card and I'm left with a rectangle that's around 15 centimeters long, which, when I roll it up, overlapping by around 1 centimeter, it contains my battery tea light without touching it. I also tested my tea lights to make sure they don't heat up. If you don't know the thickness, you can test it out by seeing how easily you can roll it up and press folds. My plastic is medium stiffness, so I need to press with my nails. I'm pulling on the top and bottom to make the pattern more 3D. I'm painting a base pattern using acrylic paint because it dries waterproof. You can paint whatever design you want, I am just doing dots because it's easy. After drying, I'm brushing one coat of paint, and I used white because I like the frosted look it gives. Wait for 5 minutes as it becomes easier to carve out the hexagon pattern again with a cocktail stick, which will make the pattern visible in a shadow. I'm just painting over the corners which were covered by the sticky tape. After drying, I'm rolling it up and adjusting so that where the sides meet, the pattern is continuous. My overlap here is triangular and that's because the pattern can slightly change direction along the sheet, so I'm trimming at a diagonal to make the overlap even and narrow and around 3 to 5 millimeters wide. I'm applying PVA glue to the end pressing and holding along the edge for around 3 minutes so it's set. Finally, I am cutting the excess plastic so the edge is smooth. So this is the finished lantern and when there's a light shining above you get a pattern on the surface. The pattern also shows near walls and ceilings. Last up is the chocolate version. I'm using greaseproof paper and it's very easy to make narrow patterns because the paper is very thin and slippery and easy to roll up tightly. I'm spreading melted chocolate as a base layer on the paper, going slowly to make sure that I fill the ridges of the pattern with chocolate. The chocolate layer is around 1mm thick. Here I'm positioning the paper to make a tube, pulling at the end so the pattern is clearer. I've left a gap in the tube because you can't peel away the paper if the ends stick. On the left is a square piece of paper with a hexagon pattern on its diagonal, which I'm rolling up, and on the right is a flat version. Again, I'm repositioning to make the pattern clear. I left them in the fridge for 15 minutes to partly set the base, and then I'm spreading a second coating of chocolate, again around 1mm thick. When forming the tube again, I'm clicking flat or raised sections into place. The diagonal roll is reshaped similarly to the tube, and finally I'm reshaping the flat piece. They go back in the fridge for around 30 minutes until set. Then I'm slowly peeling away the greaseproof paper, because otherwise the chocolate can break. If it's a hot day, holding it for too long melts the chocolate, so it breaks when peeling. 
If you feel the chocolate is still stuck to the paper and not peeling away cleanly and easily, pop it back in the fridge until it hardens. I've made some more pieces and the broken pieces were an accident because the layer of chocolate wasn't thick enough, but I think they look interesting. So here I've used them to decorate dessert plates. You can also fill the tubes and to do this I'm sealing the gap with melted chocolate and refrigerating for 15 minutes so the chocolate hardens. A really quick filling is mixing a crushed biscuit with a tablespoon of soft cheese in a resealable plastic bag. I'm squeezing into the tube from both ends. This mixture is enough to fill two tubes that are around 9cm long and 2cm in diameter. So that's the finished product. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like and share if you enjoyed it. Send or tag me in a picture if you try anything out from the video or come up with a different idea using the method. I have Facebook and Instagram pages listed in the description box so if you'd like to see more follow me on there too. Bye!